Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God who was slain. Hallelujah. The Lord, friends in Christ, we want to welcome you to our first solution hour for, for the month of October. The Lord has brought us here safely, so let us just uh, let us go to him in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise because you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be adored. You are worthy to be lifted up. You are the one who is pavilion in splendor, the one who is guarded with praise. The one, Father God, that the heavenly host reverence and worship, saying, Holy, 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 Holy is the Lord. Lord, as people of sinful lives who live amongst other sinful people, Lord, we know, Lord God, that we cannot come into your mm -hmm. presence just as we are without acknowledging our sins. So, Lord God, we mm -hmm. humbly and penitently confess our sins this day, our sins in words, thoughts, and deed. Our failure, Lord God, not to walk in obedience to your laws. Our failure to love you with our all heart, mind, strength, and soul, and failure to love our neighbors as ourselves. So as we come, you said we should come just as we are, Lord God. Come with our burdens, come with our weariness, come to Jesus, the lamb that was slain before the creation of the world. So Lord God, we just come and ask, Lord God, that you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We ask, Lord God, that as we gather, you promise that you will be where your people gather. Thank you, Lord God, for all that have connected this morning from different areas. Father, Lord God, we all have walked different paths during this week. But as our paths converge in you this morning, Holy God, we just ask that you meet every one of us at the point of our needs. No matter how diverse those needs may be, we know, Lord God, that you are able to meet us there. You are the one, Lord God, who is able to proffer solutions to our many challenges. And so, Lord God, even as we've come to seek you, we, we just ask, Lord God, that you be present among us in this hour. It's a sweet hour of prayer, sweet hour of praise, sweet hour of just receiving from you. The hymn writer says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory is shed on our ways. So, Lord God, we pray that your glory be shed on our ways this day. We ask, Lord God, that you grant us grace not only to trust, but Father God, to demonstrate this trust through our obedience. Gracious God, you remind us that there's no other foundation that can be built, and the only foundation is that which is Christ the Lord. And so, Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that as we reestablish our foundation on the solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, we just ask, Lord God, that you would help us. We all collectively, we are the temple of the living God. Your spirit is among us. So we just pray, Lord God, that you consecrate this time. We ask, Lord God, for those that are already on this Zoom um, gathering right now and those who will join, and even those that will have the privilege and opportunity to partake of the blessings through the recording. Lord, we ask, Lord God, that as they come to the foot of the cross, Lord God, that uh, they would receive whatever their heart desires according to your perfect will for them. Gracious God, we pray for all those that you would use, Father God, during this gathering, especially your servant, uh, beloved bishop, which will uh, exhort in us with your word. We pray, Lord God, that we'll be motivated, we'll be challenged, we'll be, we'll, we'll be able to reflect, and Lord God, we just uh, consecrate our lives afresh to you. Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that... Uh, you just be with us that you manifest your holy presence during this gathering. Lord God, we have come to seek you and you have promised that anyone who seeks you with their whole heart will find you. And so, Lord God, we pray that in this gathering, Father Lord God, that we would have a fresh encounter with you. We ask, Lord God, that as we encounter you, Lord, our lives will be transformed so that we may truly be the salt and the light that you have called us to be. You have placed us all, Lord God, in different areas of this of this nation and indeed our world for such a time as this. And so, Lord God, we pray that we'll be mindful of how we use our time, redeeming the time, knowing that the days are evil. Lord God, we just ask, Lord God, your blessings upon this nation and all, and even the nation of the birth of most of us, which is Nigeria. We just ask, Lord God, that our time together this day, Lord God, 
will be fruitful, will be beneficial, so that at the end, Lord God, when we wrap up and we, have, we collectively uh, share the grace in, in unison, we will have cause to look back and return thanks and praise to you. We ask this, Lord God, knowing that you hear us when we ask, especially when we ask in the name that is above every other name, the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, because we know that you will do exceedingly, <laughs> abundantly beyond that which we ask this day, for we ask it with confident assurance and thanksgiving in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. with us still and with all who will trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in jesus but to trust and obey not a burden we bear not a sorrow but our coil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. Trust and obey. What we never can prove, the delights of His love, until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. And obey, or there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. As we will do, where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. Uh, I want us all to unmute ourselves this morning because we are going to do things differently this morning. I want to take us through Psalm 124 in this psalm. David is reflecting and thanking God for saving Israel. And it goes like this. What if the Lord had not been on our side? Hmm. Let Israel repeat. What if the Lord had not been on our side? When people attacked us, they would have swallowed us alive in their burning anger. The waters would have engulfed us. A torrent would have overwhelmed us. Yes, the raging waters of their fury would have overwhelmed our very lives. Praise the Lord, who did not let their teeth tear us apart. We escaped like a bird from a hunter's trap. The trap is broken, and we are free. Our help is 
from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Amen. We have come to time of testimony where we want to testify to the power of God in our lives individually. I don't know of anybody here this morning that God has not done one thing or the other four in this past week. So I want you to reflect individually mm -hmm. and identify one, just one thing that happened to you this week that you know and you know and you know for sure this must be God. Mm -hmm. And I want you to share it with all of us in one sentence. I will start. My bishop will follow. And then if there is nobody that says anything, I will call upon you. I want to thank, I will, I want to thank God because this time last week, I was traveling. In fact, when I was participating in this program last week, I was not at home. Mm -hmm. And all the journey went smoothly. I enjoyed myself in the presence of God with you and with other people. And he brought me back home safely i know he took charge of the skies on my behalf to be here with you today glory to god hallelujah my bishop go ahead yeah, real quick going to this again in our lives particularly in the relationship between my wife and i today is exactly 30 years the glory of God. And in Hallelujah. The holy, Hallelujah. All the way. Hallelujah be unto his holy name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Mama Dr. Udeaga, it's your turn, though. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know where to start. I find any... <laughs> There's so many things coming together. Um, my daughter arrived last night, very late last night, even though her luggage did not come in. At least we have her. We are waiting the luggage. And I finally found an office for my clinic. Hallelujah. Finally. So everything is taking shape. And it's crazy the way I don't even know what is going on, but something is happening. Hallelujah. So, we have a place, an office for a clinic. Hallelujah. My dear Reverend Kufri Abbasi, we are waiting for you. Okay. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I personally had a testimony to share. If, if I was given, if the opportunity was given for people to have lifted up their hands, I had a testimony. At least there are two, but I would like to share one. One of them is like last week, there was an issue with a family I was praying with. So, and the, the second uh, son was to travel to UK. And but he, he has tried and tried and tried. They keep, they keep pushing him down. He later had a problem with his brother, which the mother told me. And I called his son and I prayed for him. And I told him, if you go to make peace with your brother, if you make peace with your brother, uh, the Lord told me that if you can make peace with your brother, it was a very a very serious case with the brother that they, they fought and there was a serious case that they didn't want to have anything to do in common anymore. But I think as I prayed and I told him, you can make peace with your brother and then go to apologize to your brother. The Lord will open a way for you to travel. And he said, Reverend, is that what even I say? Yes, I have prayed for you. And then when he went and assumed with the brother and kneeled down and, and tell the brother, I'm sorry. And there was peace. I want to say, after about three weeks or a month, he was called for in, uh, embassy. The, the, the American embassy called him. And as I'm speaking with you here, he's in UK. And I think I was able to link him up with the bishop of UK, a Methodist bishop in UK, which that is not very big. Called me when he reached to UK and said, I thank God I did what you said. And so I want to glorify God for that big testimony and for God not I mean, God opening a way for him. And I want Hallelujah. to thank God personally for my daughter who is uh, about to become 10 years old. So I, I want to Hallelujah. appreciate God for her. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Linda Calhoun, we want to hear from you. What has the Lord done this past week? 
Praise the Lord. Uh, I thank God that he is walking beside me. Amen. I go through a tunnel of health issues with my daughter. Mm. But going through, and I know that he will see me through, but I know Amen. that he is walking by my side. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Mama Maria Opara, go for it from California. Let's go. What is the lamb? Hallelujah. Uh, you know, every day is a day of gratitude. Where Amen. I'm, so I am thankful to God for a host of other things that he's done for me. Uh, last week, uh, Sister Linda uh, Titus and I received um, an award from this community. But before uh, we um, we went, we were, God. we were all supposed to wear our special pair of uh, sneakers uh, all uh, fixed up. My, my son is an artist. So um, he bought the sneakers and he painted it for me and designed it um, in what what he 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 thinks I would like. So he he designed all the planets on this uh, on this pair of sneakers, <clears throat> so, so to make it unique. But just before um, I got to his house to pick it up, he said he had one more thing to say to me, and um, and um, I wasn't sure what he had to say because I have only one son, and um, I tend to spend a lot of time with him, but. You know, that's what mothers do. Um, but he said he um, he has watched me struggle through the years uh, to raise them. But he wanted to give me something special. And I thought, what could that possibly be? You've given me the shoe and it's all painted. And he hands me this envelope. I asked him what was in the envelope. I asked him if he was in trouble and he said, no. Um, he just wanted me to have this. It was just the beginning. And, uh, and I said, what's in the envelope? He said, money. And I said, how much is this money? Because I don't want to, I don't want to have a brace, a matching bracelet from the uh, law enforcement. And he says, it's money he has been saving through the years. And, um, so he handed me $20,000 in cash wow. and, wow. and wow. said, this is just the beginning of, of his gratitude towards me. So um, I wasn't expecting it, but God always shows up when you least expect it. What is that? Hallelujah. Yeah. Sister Bimbola OEG. What do you have for us this morning? Okay, I don't think she had us. Let us go to God and thank him for all of these testimonies that we have had this morning. If the Lord had not been for us, what could we have been saying right now? Because he is gracious, he is merciful, he is our provider, our protector. He is the one that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we can think or even ask for. Let us thank him for all that he has done in our own lives, in the lives of our children, in the lives of our family, in the lives of our co-workers, in the lives of the uh, of the people that he has put us beside to walk with let us thank him let us thank him for nigeria yes there are many things going on in nigeria that we don't like but look it could be worse it could be worse but where we are at today, let us thank him for what he has done for us. Let us thank him for bringing us even to this country to partake of the blessings of this country. This is our own Canaan land, the land, the promised land. Where you are today is your promised land. Yes, you can go higher and go into better experience, but where you are at today is your promised land. The Bible says, I know the plan that I have for you. It is not a plan to destroy you, but a plan to give you a hope and a future. Your future will be better than what you even have today. But first of all, thank him for what you are experiencing today because you, you, it can only get better from this time out because our Lord is an awesome, powerful God who is able to 
grant our heart desire, but according to his plan and purpose and according to his riches in glory. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. We adore you. We exalt your holy name. We declare there is none like you. There is none besides you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the everlasting Father. You are God in whom there is no variableness, oh, yes, there is shadow of turning. Oh, yes, we bless your holy name for all that you have done, for yeah. all that you are doing, yeah. and for yeah. all that you will do. And we say, thank you, Father. Yeah. Glory to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I worship Amen. And amen. Amen. What is the Lamb? Hallelujah. The Bible reading uh, for the solution hour shall be read from the, from the from Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 to 14. We shall read our first Bible lesson for this service as recorded. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, we are reading from verse 11. I begin to read. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods. Thank you. You are muted. I'm muted. muted. I'm reading the Bible. Just to miss a little bit of technology. You are muted. It's here. You are muted. All right, I'll take that again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 14. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all the, his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, Above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt thou be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle. An increase of thy king and the flocks of thy hips of thy ships. Mm. Blessed shall thou be the basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and shall flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in the storehouse and in all that thou set thy hands unto. Thou shalt be blessed in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he had sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. And all, and all people of the earth shall see that thou had called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of the ground, and the land which thou, 
Lord sworn unto thy fathers to give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee good treasures and the heaven to give thee rain unto thy land and in his season to bless all the works of thine hand and thou shalt learn unto many nations and thou shalt not bore. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail and thou shalt be above only and thou shalt not be beneath if thou if that thou hearken unto the voice of the Lord, which command thee this day to observe and to do the verse 14 and the last. And thou shalt not go aside from any of his word, which I command thee this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods and to serve them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, thanks be to God. What the word is the lamp? Hallelujah. The second passage we just want us to note, we can read it ourselves at home after now so that we can be effective with time. Please note it. We are still going to take a verse from it, but note it is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 from verses 11 to 23. First Corinthians 3, 11 to 23. When we, after this program in the course of today, just read it and we pray the Holy Spirit will minister revelation from that passage unto you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Precious Redeemer, we give you praise once again. In your presence, there is anointing. In your presence, your spirit moves around us. In your presence, anointing breaks every yoke. We're on the solution mountain, Lord, and we've come to receive solutions. In the spiritual realm, in the physical realm, financially, materially, in all dimensions of our lives, visit us afresh this morning. Visit our families afresh this morning. Visit all areas and ramifications all of that. our lives afresh this morning in the mighty name of Jesus when Christ. When I come up from Thomas, Blaine, I'm, going to Amen. Walk, I'm going to show you how to be washing that bathroom. Amen. So I come back and show you. Amen. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb. Hallelujah. What? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please let's mute. Let's mute. And let's just focus on what God is going to be telling us in the next few minutes. Yeah, just mute. I know you also want to say amen. You can say amen as you're muted and God will receive it from us wherever we are located. The word of God says, decree a thing and it will be established. That is clear. And we have agreed and decreed concerning this month of October, that it is our month of open heavens. A month of open heavens. It is a month of celebrations. It is a month of thanksgiving. And it is a month of overflowing joy. Now, if you were to look at some of these blessings we are claiming, they emanate simply from the letters of the month, October. So, very simply put, we have decreed those blessings as God has given us grace, and God himself will establish them. But how is God going to establish them? Deuteronomy 28 is probably one of the most popular verses for a lot of people. For those here with us on this Solution Mountain now, as well as those that will come to view the recorded message and this recorded program, I'm sure everyone will say, oh, I've read Deuteronomy 28 so many times. But do you know something? One clear aspect 
of Deuteronomy 28 from verses 1 to 14 is that it describes, expansiates all of the blessings that God intends to bestow upon us. If, if, and a whole lot of times people always rush for the blessings. They have records of all the blessings. They have classifications, categories. They can describe those blessings, but they are not ever intentional about the if. If. And, and that if right at the beginning says, and it shall come to pass, if. We need to appreciate that. That's the very first sentence. If. Amen. Amen. Now, a whole lot of people will tell you, I have read this in the Bible. I have heard this man of God preach. I have seen. I know. The Bible does not talk about blessings unto those who only say the word of God. It doesn't talk about those who just read the word of God. It says those who will hearken diligently. So it's talking about knowing, reading, meditating, and acting on the word. It's talking about obedience. And if we look at the hymn that introduced this service, it is a very popular and powerful Methodist hymn and I know a lot of denominations over time have also inherited it. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. For God, there can be no mistakes. There can be no failures. God is faithful. And when things don't happen right, it's on our side. And I want us to hold that in one hand. We'll come back to that if. Now, verse 12 says, the Lord shall open unto you his good treasure. The heaven is talking about open heavens. And you know, right from Genesis chapter 1, you see the explanation of open heavens. And the earth was without form and void. And the spirit of the Lord breathed upon the earth. And God said, open heavens depict and illustrate instances where what God has said is unhindered in its manifestation. For Adam and Eve, as long as they obeyed, they had open heavens. Eden was to them a place of joy, a place of comfort. But if, if, the moment that if went negative, the moment they went contrary to the will of God, Eden became a land of exile. They were driven out of it with all the benefits. And that's why we have to sweat as men now to be able to eat. That wasn't God's intention. He said, turn the garden. And for the woman in delivery, peaceful delivery. Now, when we go to the first Corinthians, the, the, the post letter, first Corinthians chapter three, particularly verse 16, he says something that gives us hope in this dispensation of grace. He says, you and I are who? The temples of the living God. So open heavens is right, no please. longer about a God that is far off. A God that is so far off and we have to struggle to reach him. The if, the obedience today in this dispensation of grace after the finished work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, what open heavens means is that God now dwells in you and I. That's why we said, go and read that. It's not about reaching out to him and making sacrifices. No, no, no. A contrast spirit, a willing heart. That's what grants us open heavens today. Open heavens is like 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16. We are his temples. He's living in us. He's dwelling with us. Of course, he, he has said so in Ezekiel 37, 27. He has said so through the prophet Jeremiah. He has said so, but he found the expression after our Lord and Savior finished the work of salvation on the cross of Calvary and gave you and I 
the assignment of reconciling men unto him. If, now I know there are many blessings you want to receive from the Lord. We thank God for the testimonies we shared this morning. Those are great blessings. Oh, I would want $20,000 right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I would want even half of that right now. But what are the ifs? What are our areas of disobedience? I want us to reflect on them. The Holy Spirit is in here to call anybody out or embarrass anybody. This is the solution mountain. We have come here to receive solutions. What is the if? What are the diso areas of disobedience where God has told us clear things we ought to do, but we have found pleasure in doing other things? Those are the real constraints, the real obstacles to our miracles. It's not that man, oh, this brother is so wicked. It's not that boss. It's the if. It's our areas of disobedience. And I want us to just tell God on this solution mountain, as I walk through October, November, December, and close this year, 2023, I yield unto you. I forgo, let go the areas of disobedience. You dwell in me, I'm your temple. Have your way in my life. And in my obedience, Lord, bless me beyond my imaginations. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Just talk to God. And I want to call the Synod Secretary at this time to take us through the intercessory prayers as we keep talking to God and we walk with the Lord in the light of his word. What a glory. He sheds on our way as we trust and obey. Just talk to God. Areas of disobedience. Ah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I want us at this time to in identifying those areas of disobedience, just ask God for grace. Ask him for grace. Ask him for grace. And if anybody has any prayer request at this time, you can just send it to the chat so that we'll bring them together at this time of intercessory prayers. As we are doing that, let us just lift up the United States of America for intercession at this time. Let's intercede for the United States of America and ask God in his infinite mercies and grace to heal this country. I, I know that what's going on in the political terrain right now is not particularly exciting, but God is able, he's able Ask him as we are looking for a new speaker that God himself will identify. Identify the candidate he has anointed that will provide the leadership, cohesive leadership for this great country. Ask God to interpret MAGA, the real interpretation of make America great again. America is better, is God's own country. Greatness born of love. Greatness born of justice. Greatness born of freedom. The land of the brave. The land of the free. That's what it's supposed to be. Better. God's dwelling place. And that anyone that does not identify with all of those great divine values, that God will silence them. We're not asking people to die. No, 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 no. Silence them by leading them to repentance. Intercede for the various countries of origin we represent here. We represent Nigeria here. We represent Sierra Leone. We have people from Sierra Leone here. We represent people from the West Indies here, from Ghana, from Kenya. Pray for our countries of origin. That God will heal those countries. Heal every single one of us. Grant us righteous leadership. For the word of God says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Let us lift up at this time the Church of God Universal, using all of us here as a contact point. We are the church. 
Matthew 18, 19 says we are two or three. Two or three. And we're almost 30 here, maybe more. And those who will come to join us even before we conclude. This is the church. Pray that the church will march on and will fulfill our divine mandate, which is the Great Commission. Matthew 28, 18. Go ye therefore, make disciples, reconcile men. That's what we are asking of the Lord. That the church, whether in units of two house fellowships, various denominations, family, family altars. This is church. Bible says two or three. Matthew 18, 19. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, we have prayed. Amen. We haven't seen any prayer requests, so we are going to just pray generically for all of us. If there be members of our families who are far from God, let's just lift them up. Lord, we pray for their salvation. We pray for deliverance of our sons, our daughters, our nephews, our nieces, our relatives, members of our congregation. We pray for salvation of those strangers in our neighborhood. We pray for salvation of those we don't even know. That God will translate them from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the marvelous light of his son. Pray at this time for as many as are ill. You look at all the blessings with obedience, with trust, with hope in the most high God. We can receive healing. We can receive miraculous and supernatural healing. And what are we talking about? Just ask God because we know that Jesus Christ completed the work of our total deliverance and salvation on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. He has completed it. We reject any ailment, any infirmity, any disease, any sickness, by whatever name is called. And we claim our healing. We claim our healing. We claim divine health. We claim joy. We claim fruitfulness. Remember those who are pregnant and are connected to you. Pray for safe delivery for them. Safe delivery. Those are some of the blessings in Eden as we are restored by obedience and reconciled such that we are temples of the living God and God is living in us, we can receive these blessings. Pray for those believing God for the fruit of the womb, that God will bless them. Pray for families, families in relationships, relationships that have gone sour, relationships filled with pain, wherever they are, those connected to us. Pray that God will bring back the sweetness. Bible records that the first miracle our Lord and Savior performed was at the wedding at Cana. Pray for sweetness, joy into every home that is being ravaged by mistrust, betrayal, pain, resentment. Pray for sweetness. Lift up our daughters, our sons, our grandchildren that God will connect them to the bones of their bones and the flesh of their flesh. They are not going to marry anyone else's spouses. Not at all. The spouses God has ordained for them. Lord, connect them. Connect them to their spouses. Thank you for your faithfulness. Let's just lift up as many as are experiencing affliction. People ganging up against us. Look at Deuteronomy 27. The Lord shall cause your enemies who rise up against you to be smitten before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Isaiah 54, 15 says, surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of me, they will fail for your sakes. Turn it into prayer. I am not gathering against anyone, but anyone gathering against me, Anyone trying to pull me down, pull my family down, pull the ministry down, they cannot. But the word of God has declared they will scatter seven ways. They will be put to shame, but we will remain victorious. Begin to plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ upon yourselves, ourselves, from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet. Plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ upon our properties, Plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ upon our plans, our jobs, our ministries, our businesses, upon this diocese of USA. 
for our accelerated and sustained growth and development to the glory of God that we will touch lives and that we will win souls. At this time, just ask God, I have come to the solution hour, O oh Lord, on this solution mountain. Just let him know what your problems and challenges are. I'm going to do that myself. Just keep quiet for 30 seconds or one minute. I'm just going to talk to God because I've come to receive my solutions. Mm. In Jesus' mighty and victorious name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 A clap of him for Jesus. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. We want to thank everyone for coming today. Uh, the notices should be given at this time but by the Senior Secretary. Uh, I know all is well with him because we speak by faith. I, I thank God for everyone who has come here. And I thank God this is solution hour number five and is the first one in the month of October. You all know that after now, we have this recorded message on YouTube. So you can go back and reflect on it again and again. But please let us read all of First Corinthians chapter 3, 11 to 23 again again. And if you have time, read again Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15 all the way to the end. There are far more curses than blessings. So please allow the Holy Spirit take us away. Take us away from areas of disobedience. The Lord will help us even beyond our imaginations in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to invite very Reverend Dr. Patricia Sawyer to lead us through prophetic prayers at this time as we round up. In a few moments, just lead us through prophetic prayers. Thank you so much. You're welcome, sir. Yes. Let us take this moment to pray for our country, America and Nigeria. Mm. Let us pray for the body of Christ yes. and our political leaders and church leaders. Mm. Also, let us keep our faith strong because our God hears everything we say, mm. everything we think, and everything we do. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be made known to God. Brothers and sisters, let us raise our voices to pray for our people and ask God to help them in any situation they might be going through. Let us ask God to intercede on their behalf. Let us also pray for all the kings and chiefs in our country, Nigeria, and those who are in authority, so that we can live, everyone in Nigeria can live and in America, we can all live a peaceful and quiet life, marked by godliness and dignity, as explained in First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. As this is good and pleases God as Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. Let us pray for our church members here in America and in Nigeria who are going through life challenges and those who are terminally ill for God to restore back their health and touch them with his healing hands. Let us pray for those who are in various hospitals, nauseums, and private homes for God to heal them with his precious blood which is shed on the cross of Calvary. And he gave us assurance. He said it is finished. Lord Jesus, we believe that whatever sicknesses and diseases that is going through, 
everyone at this moment is finished. Now we believe that the same miracles which you performed over 2,000 years ago is still in existence. Almighty Father, we pray for the President Joe Biden. Yes, Lord. President Balatinumbu. Mm. We pray for Supreme Court Justice, mm. Congress and Senate, mayors, governors, police officers, military officers, our judges in our land, that you will give them wisdom to do what is right and please to you. Amen. Lord, we pray that the justice system we have eyes to see in the spiritual realm whether they like it or not. Mm. And that they will have divided, divide wisdom upon them to rule in America and in Nigeria with God's righteousness and according to God's plan. Lord, we are grateful for all the testimonies on this solution hour. Yes, we Lord. believe that nothing is impossible for you to do. No, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and mercies that continues to follow us in every day of our lives. Amen. We pray that as you proceed on our journey in life, there will be more breakthrough and testimony in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let us let us pray. Our Lord and Redeemer, mm. we thank you that your steadfast love is new in our life every day. Mm. Let the spirit of prophecy start to walk in our leaders. Amen. Let you did with selfers. <laughs> Teach them how to do your will. Amen. Selfers did not see this on his own as I preached. That year, when the prophet said that Jesus would die for the sin of the world, as recorded in John chapter 11, verse 50 to 51. Yes. Father, we ask that you change them, even as you did for Saul when he was the leader of Israel. Amen. And you did it for Paul in the New Testament. Yes, Lord. Now we bind, we destroy, we cancel, we reject, and we come against every evil power over yeah. our nation, in United States of, of America in and in Nigeria. In the name of we Jesus. ask that your righteousness will reign in these countries. Amen. And people is exposed and cut off in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, we ask that you pull out your sword of justice out and bring justice to where every evil is at this moment. In the name Lord, of Jesus. every agenda that is not of you, bring it into captivity. Amen. To the obedience of Christ. Amen. Almighty Father, teach all our leaders, both in the church and governing council, to possess special powers to actualize God's will Amen. according to your word in Matthew chapter 6. Yes, Lord, Lord, I pray that your kingdom may come Amen. Your will be done on earth as it Amen. is in heaven. Amen. Help us, Lord, to change our environment, Amen. to conform to your command and Amen. pave the way for your purpose. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. And the Amen. people of God says, Amen. 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 Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I want us to just open a passage of scripture as we round up. And then, based on that passage of scripture, we will just take two minutes. You can unmute if you want and just prophesy into your life and family. That passage of scripture is Mark eleven twenty four, And I pray the Holy Spirit will impart the wisdom of that passage. Mark eleven twenty four. 24, it says, in my version, so we can all read our own, in our own place. Therefore, I say unto you, whatsoever you desire, believe when you pray, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe 
you have received them and you shall have them. One particular thing we want to pray today is any area of disobedience. This is the umpteen time God is reminding us. We're always quick to see the logs in the eyes of other people. But we're asking God on this solution hour, help me to remove, we are quick to see these pecs, not pe pecs. Bible says others have pecs. We have logs. Help me, help us to remove the bots, the areas of disobedience, so that we can boldly claim anything we have asked of him. That is the will of God. Mark 11, 24, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, just turn it into self-prophecy. I claim that my areas of disobedience are gone. I claim perfection. If anybody says I shouldn't claim perfection, Matthew 5, 48 says I can claim perfection. I claim total health, deliverance from every affliction. I claim I'm a miracle worker. I claim it, I decree it, I confess it to the glory of God. I claim that my life will show forth the praise and the glory of God. I claim that I lay hands on the sick, they receive their recovery expeditedly. I claim that I am more than a conqueror. I claim that the remaining days of this year, 2023, will be the best days of my life. The 12 weeks that start tomorrow to end this year, they will be the best 12 weeks of my life. The months of October, November, December, I will end 2023. Members of my family, we will end 2023 with uncommon testimonies. Uncommon testimonies and crossover victoriously into 2024. I claim that if Jesus tarries, I will have fulfillment of my heart's desires. That is what God has taught me. I claim that by the power of the Holy Spirit, I will do exploits. Miracles, signs, and wonders will attend to my life. I claim that even the dead will rise when God gives me the grace and when it is necessary to bring them back. I claim that whatever I declare will be established. I claim that every word of God that is prophetically written concerning me will find expression in my life. I speak in tongues and the devil is confused. I speak and prophesy to somebody here. You have been going through sickness. That sickness has cost you money. You say it's insurance. It's not about insurance. Right now, in the name above all names, God has touched you on this solution mountain to his glory. Your doctors are going to be surprised. They are going to know that you serve a living God to the glory of God. Someone here in your place of work, the trouble, the trouble, the trouble, God is speaking to you. That trouble is over. Not because you are so perfect, but because God is so merciful. Hallelujah. I don't know who it is. You are having a challenge in your family, in your family, and it's a relationship issue right now. One of your children, you are disconnected from that person. Listen, just listen to God. Listen to God. Check what God wants you to do. God is reconnecting you. God is reconnecting you. But we need to obey. We need to obey. Grace for obedience. Grace for obedience. Let's begin to plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ upon all of us. The remaining weeks of this year, we yield increase unto us. We will make more financial inflow than we have made in any other 12 weeks of our lives to the glory of God. Father, in your mercy, complete our prayers. So call of us deep in the precious blood of Jesus Christ from the crowns of our heads to the soles of our feet, every member of our family, every member of this diocese, everyone that has come here today. This is the solution mountain. We go with our solutions. And you, O oh Lord, all the glory, all the praise, all the worship, all adoration, they remain with you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us all with boldness confess together. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. The grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, let, us, let us unmute and appreciate one another. Thank God. Good to see you guys. Pastor Unga. Sir, I'm good here. To see you. Good, good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. God bless.